I have invited a Cub Scout, my grandson, Stephen Catania III, and his parent, my son Stephen, to participate in the demonstration of the Derby Car Wheel and Axle Workstation, which utilizes sliding platforms to which sandpaper and a file have been applied in mini lathe configuration and concept. Here we see the mini lathe workstation being leveled and positioned to lie parallel to the drill, which is placed in a vise. At this point, the, the uh, rotating axle is being leveled and is now being positioned into the workstation posts. The workstation is mounted on a small block of wood and underneath we are then leveling with books, magazines and other blocks of wood to have a level system of rotation. Four wheels are mounted on the axle rod and locked between two small anchors using an allen wrench which secures the inset screw on the anchors. The four wheels are, are thus lo locked as a single workpiece to rotate as the drill is turned on slowly. Slowly turn the, the axle rod with the drill as the scout places a thin card to which various grades of sandpaper are applied. The scout places this on the top platform and the slope platform with the sandpaper is gently pushed into the slowly rotating wheels. In a close-up view of the sandpaper, the uneven wheel tread surfaces have been sanded first as we can see on this section of the sandpaper. Areas of the irregularity, the wheels that are larger in certain sections will sand first and so the, un the surface that is sanded will look uneven. Following Boy Scout of America regulations, only a thin amount of plastic is removed from the wheel treads so that the wheel treads become flat to the surface of the track. As we have pointed out earlier, if the tread is not flat, and parallel to the axis of rotation, the wheel will try to flatten, causing increased friction at the axle wheel hub interfaces. A lathe we're looking at, a mini lathe, is showing uh, the four wheels being symmetrically sanded. Uh, you can see the the marks left on the sandpaper from slow grinding of the wheels so that they are flat and 180 degrees to rotation. Only a very thin film can re be removed maintaining the official rules of the Boy Scouts and the tread is not narrowed. Uh, we are producing four wheels of identical diameter with treads perfectly um, parallel to the axis of rotation. In the next view we're seeing the complete workstation which has the four wheels which can be the sander that's shown and there is also a wheel axle in position on the right to which as we demonstrate now in the third view uh, a, a 60 a, an important principle for maintaining a very balanced and true wheel is that the tread be parallel to the axis of rotation of the wheel in other words 180 degrees to axis of rotation of the wheel when the tread is not at 180 degrees the wheel tends to shift slightly and produces areas of friction on the axle wheel bore interface. When the wheel is perfectly balanced, such as the tread is 180 degrees to the axis of rotation, there is no extraneous forces exerted on the wheel axle. Turning now to the first lathe, mini lathe demonstrating uh, the uh, wheel mini lathe showing the uh, rotation of four wheels simultaneously and you can see the fine um, which were taken off as the wheels are very slowly rotated. The wheels now are perfectly uh, identical in size and the 
tread is 180 degrees to axis of rotation which produces a very balanced wheel. A wheel that is balanced and you cannot, you cannot tell it's even rotating when it's spun. Turning now to the mini lathe which is a complete workstation we see the wheels in position to be sanded uh, using standard uh, traditional Boy Scout technique and various grades of of um, sanding with 400, 800, 1500 sandpaper. A small a wheel axle has been positioned in the right column uh, and there's a V-groove to which a file is inserted, turning now demonstrating a file in position to catch the inner surface of the wheel axle head uh, as the upper platform can be maneuvered to slide sideways to catch the inner surface of the wheel axle, uh, which takes away the the um, gussets in the angle of the wheel head axle. To remove the burrs, we turn to a flat surface, which is a V-shaped piece of aluminum to which the uh, triangular file inserts and fits flat under these, so that now as we advance the the small platform, we now get all of the burrs which are on the uh, shaft surface of the, of the wheel axle. Finally, we can apply to the side of the wheel uh, head a aluminum bar with, with fine sheets of sandpaper, various grits to fine tune the inner surface of the head and similarly uh, a piece of sandpaper can be applied to the surface of the of the triangular file to which we apply with the platform a fine surface to the shaft itself. An important concept in wheel and axle performance is preferential central axis rotation. When the wheel tread and axle shaft are parallel 180 degrees to the axis of rotation, minim it minimizes lateral forces which cause the wheel to ride the axle head or the body of the derby car. To illustrate this concept, in this example we have a wheel tread which is not parallel or 180 degrees to the axis of rotation. The inner diameter is slightly smaller than the outer diameter, which produces a tread which is slightly angled to the racetrack surface. This produces increased frictional forces on the wheel, axle bore, axle shaft surfaces, laterally and medially. There also is the tendency of the wheel to migrate toward the axle head in this example, increasing frictional forces. Again, if the axle shaft is not parallel to the track surface or the axle shaft itself is not filed or sanded in a parallel plane, the wheels would tend to migrate either to the axle head or back toward the body of the derby car. A truly balanced wheel and axle with a flat tread parallel to the axis of rotation and an axle shaft parallel to axis of rotation produces a preferential central axis rotation. The wheel then is rotating in the mid portion of the exposed axle with minimal tendency or forces driving it toward the head or toward the body of the car. This is producing optimal wheel axle performance. These are the components of the wheel mini lathe with the single platform and the components of the wheel and axle mini lathe with the lower platform and the upper platform. These are the two wheel anchors and the wheel axle rod. An alternative to connecting the drill or the dremel directly to the axle rod shaft is to use a flex shaft which allows one to place the drill or dremel flat on the table and connect a flexible shaft to both to the axle rod and to the 
the wheel axle itself, which, and this is su supported by a small block of wood or book, and uh, provides for easy access and rotation of the wheel shaft and the axle shaft. In summary, then, the platform lathe provides a unique opportunity to produce very balanced and true wheels and axles at 90 degrees and 180 degrees to axis of rotation so that you minimize all of the friction forces. The concept is unique and exciting and it's very applicable for the Cub Scouts, uh, for the Cub Scout to utilize as we have demonstrated.